is unbalanced and turns against himself. Isn't that what I was just talking about? Your own fear turns against you. Who followed? Who that? You got high so much trying to go down the street and it's dark now and you wonder who's coming out the shower. Down here, I could have never got high down here. Okay. Ain't enough lights. I would have thought everything was chasing me. I have just been done. I've been sending people out. Now watch this. Fear also affects our immune system. We always thought AIDS, HIV. Huh? So y'all didn't know fear can affect your immune system. Fear gets your body it just destroys it. You're making your body work too hard. Stress will do that too, because that's going to be the next one we study after stress. More people drop dead over stress. Amen. Watch this. Fear has the power to interrupt the function of the immune system and therefore to interfere with God's healing process in your life. Since drug use produces fear, paranoia, or schizophrenia, then drug use also interferes with God's healing process. Only God can deliver us from our fears. When we hear the voice of the devil whispering and suggesting negative fear, producing thoughts in our head, these fear thoughts must be replaced with a more powerful spiritual thought. We call the process of the replacement of the self-destructive thoughts STD, ST, SDT, with spiritual replacement thoughts, or SRTs, the trace, erase, and replace process. Now, I'm getting ready to ask y'all some questions. For example, if you hear a voice in your head saying, something bad is going to happen to me, it can be replaced by any number of spiritual thoughts from God's word. One such spiritual thought might be, I will fear no evil. Mm. For God is with me, Psalms 23, 4. One of the purposes of this lesson is for you to be healed and set free from the captivity of fear, which is induced by negative thoughts and or street drugs. By believing in and accepting God and the healing methods of the great physician, Jesus Christ, you can be completely healed and completely free from self-destructive fear. Amen? Let's look at the first... Y'all got it on your list. I want each person, I want you to read. Let's go to the fear category. And I need you to read out loud. <laughs> Mr. Joy, read the first one for me on the list. Did you get a sheet? All right. And I need somebody else to read the second one. Now we need to move fast. Well, let's start. Somebody read real loud. It should be Genesis 26 and 24. What does it say? Yeah, go to Genesis. Each person get one of them in the scripture. Now, with Tom's sake, y'all want me to do it? No. I want you to get involved with this. Genesis 26 and 24. Somebody read. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
What's the next one? First John 4, 4. Go. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Woo! Because great is he that is in you. And he that is in the world. So when fear rises up, look at all these great things. Final one. Somebody give me that one. What's that? Matthew? Matthew 20. I am teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. And to the very end of age. Amen. 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 Now, who's dealing with fear here? Hmm. <laughs> ah. What are you fearing, bro? Whole lot of things. What one of them verses is going to help you? All of them. Bingo! That's what I wanted you to say. All of them. Because <laughs> God's word helps you completely. You grab the one that he put in your heart at that moment and yell it out, dude. Soon as that thought come, that self-destructive thought come, you chase it. Where'd it come from? Could have been your mama, your brother, your sister, your friend. Trying to get you to do something. Don't self-destructive thought. I can do all things in Christ the third day. Oh, self-destructive thought. I shall have no fear. Self-destructive thought. God, oh, I can do what? What's the other one? Uh, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. See all these things? And it's a million more. It's a million more. Anybody see how this work? Yeah, I got it. Huh? You're starting to understand the Tracy race. Self-destructive thought and SRT process. Why? Because you've got to understand it's an activating event that you cannot stop. You can't prevent it. You can't do nothing about it. You may have planned to get up in the morning, smile and kiss your wife, walk out the door, come home to a wonderful dinner, lay down, go to sleep, listen to some music. But all of a sudden, you come home and an activating event occurs. all that can go you may plan to go to work and have a beautiful day. All of a sudden, become a disgruntled employee, <laughs> activating that you can't stop. You wake up in here thinking, oh, boy, I'm just going to have some nice breakfast with dinner and not deal with it. Then one of these brothers wake up and throw a chair at you or something. You can't stop it. But what you can do is change your belief about it, which will control your emotions concerning it, which will stop what you want to do in your behavior. Amen. Amen. I'm just using little examples that I can grab. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. And I want to show you something. Actually, you can take this whole Psalms and bless yourself. Actually, I had said something about this before. This psalm, this psalm's here is David speaking about how to destroy circumstances in his life. Okay? Let's look at it. Ready? Let's read it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I be? Woo! The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be? What? Afraid. Woo! Jesus. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they did what? Upon me, and he will do what? 
See, here it is. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are rise up against me and such a breathe out cruelty. I have faded unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Now here's the key. Ready? Here's the key, people. Here's the key, people. Oh, you got it. Here it is. Wait. 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 Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And be a what? Good courage. Courage is the opposite of fear. I mean, Proverbs 1. Make that Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. Now, you know I love, I'm a, I'm a person who believes in instruction and correction and establishing you and building you and guiding you in all righteousness. The only way I got out of my message is through the word of correction with God. I wasn't looking for a house and a car in the Bible. I wasn't looking for a lot of money. I was looking for God to straighten my tail out. But I was a mess. I had money. I wasn't rich. But for some reason, the devil kept giving me money to keep getting high, to keep sinning. Never went empty. I smoked you out of the best. People were dropping in front of me, and I was dropping big old bottles wondering why my heart didn't blow. You know? I remember that college guy. What was that college guy? Uh, 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 bias or something? Yeah, yeah. 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 Little Bias. First time he dropped the rock, he had a heart attack. Blew up! I'm like, I'm dropping them every night. That boy dropped one just because he got a new contract in the NBA, never made the money. Boom! Dead. Never made the money. All oh, because he wanted to party. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 1. So don't get mad at me when I read these scriptures. Take them to heart. Know that I love you. See if you see yourself in it. Amen? Amen. 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 I've read things here before, but the Lord told me I need to read the beginning of this lesson. So I am. Starting at verse 7. Proverbs 1, verse 7 says what? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But who despise what? So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's the scripture where it says you need to fear God. That's the only one you need to fear. Amen? Amen. Because we don't have a healthy fear of God. I'm going to go on. Uh, ask me afterwards. Jump over to verse 22 of the same chapter. And let's get it read. Are you ready? So we know now the fear of the Lord is getting in the knowledge. Verse 22. No, wait a minute. Excuse me. Go up to verse 20. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice. In the streets. Now watch this. Stop. Then it says she. Wisdom and understanding is always referred to as woman. Remember I told you all that? Then it says wisdom cries out. She. Verse 21. She cries in the chief places of the concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city she uttered her words saying. How long you simple ones. Simple ones mean stupid or foolish. Will you love stupidity or simplicity? And the scorners delight in the, their scorning, and fools hate what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. That means you have turned away from my disciplines and correction. You turned away from my discipline. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. Now, he ain't talking about a good thing here. <laughs> he's talking about whipping your tail. Everybody's talking, I got the spirit of God on me. No, in this verse, he's talking about, I'm going to pour my spirit out on you. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and you refuse. Stop fearing. Hey, this is God. You ain't got nothing to fear. I got you. Hey, I'm calling you, but you ain't hearing me. I've been calling you all your life, but you ain't hearing me because you fear something else more than you fear me. You don't have a healthy fear toward me because you fear that drunk you on the corner. You feel that. 
at the God. Verse 25. But you have set at nothing all my counsel. I've been trying to straighten you out. I've been trying to take you going down the wrong road. I put a fork in the road. You always go the other direction. You are headed toward me, but soon as somebody gives you what you think is a better opportunity, a five-dollar <coughs> bag, where God had a, an unending riches for you, you went toward a five-dollar bag of 40. Hello. Amen. But you have said that nothing on my counsel and would have none of my reproof. The more I tried to discipline you, you wouldn't accept it. Verse 26. I will now, now you're the main God upset, ready? Verse 26. Watch this, y'all. I hope I'm giving you a healthy fear of the Lord now. This is my premise here right now. We want to destroy fear so that you can get a healthy fear of Jesus. Verse 27. No, verse 26. I also will laugh at your commandment. Now God said, you know what? I've been trying all this and you refuse. Now I'm going to laugh at you. Ha, ha, ha. See, y'all ain't going to Come on. Take my hand off. Woo! I'm releasing you. That's right. <laughs> and what are you going to do? I will mock when your fear comes. Did y'all get that? Change! 
Proverbs chapter 10 and read verse 24. You read verse 24. You there? All right. It says, it says, the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desires of the righteous shall be granted. So as the whirlwind passeth, says, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Amen. Amen. Final verse. I think I need to leave y'all with some encouragement. I think I gave you a lot. No, 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 you know, 33 was the encouragement right there. That was the encouragement right there. He took all that. He showed, he gave us all that he's going to do to us. But he turned right around and told us, he said, I still bless you, though. I still bless you. I still bless you, though. I still bless you. Matter of fact, God just told me to go somewhere else. Look, go to Proverbs, Romans chapter 13. Okay. Romans chapter 13. <laughs> Romans chapter 13. Boy, we in there right on time, too. I don't know why he's taking me here, but maybe this is for somebody. Romans 13. Ready? Looking at verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but God. There is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Let me explain that. That means everybody in government, your police officer, anybody that's ahead of you is your higher power. Whether they're good or evil, God says I ordain them. We well, got Christians talking about kill President Obama. Once God put that leader in position, you respect him. Even the evil leaders, God ordained. They're doing his purpose. So higher power is not God. Higher power is anybody that has a rule over you. Amen. So let's keep reading. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinances of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves their Oh, you 